Hey guys, we're gonna learn transcription in eukaryotes in this video. I suggest you first watch the video of transcription in prokaryotes because that one is much easier. So by definition, transcription is the production of RNA based on DNA as template. Let's get familiar with the important players in transcription in eukaryotes. Obviously, firstly we need RNA polymerase. There are three types of RNA polymerase in eukaryotic cell and the RNA polymerase that is responsible for transcribing protein coding gene is RNA polymerase 2. So I put RNA polymerase 2 here. We need ribonucleoside triphosphates or RNTPs. Why ribonucleoside triphosphates? Because we're making ribonucleic acids or RNA. We also need promoter and its key elements. And by key elements I mean Tata box. Okay, if over here we have the promoter, then Tata box is somewhere within the promoter, say for example here. It is called Tata box because it is a DNA motif rich in the two bases A and T, which is around 25 to 30 nucleotides upstream of a the transcription start site. So if he, over here we have the transcription start site plus one, Tata box is upstream of the transcription start site, and this one here is our gene. What else do we need? We need transcription factors. or TFs. Transcription factors are needed for recruitment of RNA polymerase 2 to start transcription. So, in other words, RNA polymerase 2 of eukaryotes, contrary to prokaryotes, does not recognize and bind to promoter on its own, but transcription factors assist it with uh, its binding to DNA. We also need enhancers and silencers and silencer. Enhancers and silencers, they are the two elements which respectively enhance or suppress transcription of a gene. That's almost all we need for transcription. Remember only one strand is used as template and RNA polymerase reads the DNA template from its 3' prime to 5' prime direction to produce pre-mRNA transcript from its 5' prime to 3' prime direction. This is very Im important to understand. Now the transcription in eukaryotes, like prokaryotes, has three stages. One is initiation, then we have elongation, and lastly we have termination. Starting with initiation, the first step in formation of a, a transcription complex is the binding of a general transcription factor called TF2D. I draw it here. So TF2D binds to Tata box. TF indicates transcription factor and 2 indicates polymerase 2. TF2D is itself composed of multiple subunits and one of those subunits is called Tata binding protein or TBP for short form. TBP is responsible for specifically binding to Tata box and I draw it here close to Tata box. TBP TF2D also consists of around 10 to 12 other polypeptides called TBP associated factors or the short form is TAF. TBP then binds a second general transcription factor called TF2B which I draw here. TF2B. So the whole thing becomes um, TBP TF2B complex at the promoter. This guy TF2B is responsible for linking RNA polymerase to this entire complex. So I draw RNA polymerase in pink around here which is a big protein and it's bound to this complex by means of TF2B. When RNA polymerase 2 wants to bind to this whole thing, it is already associated with a third factor called uh, TF2F, 
which I draw here. It's not important, but I just put it for your information in case you're interested to know. Transcription initiation stage is completed when two additional factors called TF2E and TF2H associate with RNA polymerase. As you can see, it's a very giant complex. The role of this TF2H is to first unwind DNA around the initiation uh, site and secondly assist RNA polymerase proceed along the template as it elongates the growing RNA, RNA chain. So um, while this is happening, ATP is needed as energy to form RNA as transcript. So ATP needed. And the transcription can now begin to give rise to pre-mRNA. After initiation stage, we have elongation stage, which I'm going to draw for you over here. For simplicity, I use the same color for the entire complex, the same color I used to represent uh, RNA polymerase. And I put it here. This whole thing is RNA polymerase and the complex. After roughly the first 25 nucleotides of RNA that is synthesized, which looks kind of like this, with its 5' prime end here, this 5' prime end becomes modified. A guanine is added to this 3' five prime end, which I'm drawing in blue, and an enzyme called methyltransferase methylates this guanine at position 7 to give rise to 7-methylguanine cap, which I write here, 7-methylguanine cap. So this cap is protecting the 5' prime end from the activity of 5' prime exonucleases. The polymerase complex moves along DNA to make RNA. So it moves along DNA towards this direction and that, as it moves it makes RNA basically pre-mRNA until it reaches a termination site. Uh, I'm going to go to termination over here, draw it here. Again for simplicity I draw the whole complex with uh, pink color but the main enzyme that is involved here is um, RNA polymerase 2. Let's draw our RNA transcript that has been made so far. It looks kind of like this and this is its 5' prime end. Around here is the stop codon and closer to RNA polymerase is a sequence like A, A, U, A, A, A. This is our guanine cap. A specific endonuclease recognizes the termination signal, which is also known as a polyadenylation signal. This one here is our polyadenylation signal or termination signal. It's after stop codon. As you can see, RNA is still bound to RNA polymerase 2 and it has to be cleaved. The selection of uh, cleavage site is a, a, a small distance away from uh, this termination signal. And cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor, or the short form CPSF, is responsible, is the enzyme that does the cleavage. So maybe the cleavage happens around here. Right after cleavage, something else happens. If this is our pre-mRNA, pre-mRNA, an enzyme called polyadenylate polymerase adds about 250 adenosine uh, monophosphates to the, f the, the free 3' prime end of pre-mRNA. This is the 5' prime end, this one was 3' prime end, and this is called poly a tail and of course we have our guanine cap here
this PolyA tail has a couple of responsibilities. First of all, it protects pre-M RNA from degradation. Um, it promotes nuclear transport of pre-M RNA from the nucleus towards uh, cytoplasm. And later during translation, it promotes the translation. So this guy you see over here is our pre-M RNA in eukaryotic cell, which will go through some modifications to give rise to mature mRNA.